Hello everyone and uh, welcome all to Baba's Topper's Talk. And uh, today we have All India Rank 36 Ayushi Pradhani with us. Uh, congratulations Ayushi. Thank you so very much. Yeah. So uh, Ayushi is our ILP student as well. And uh, that makes it uh, even more, uh, I mean, uh, a very good result and uh, what do you say, a proud moment for us at IS Baba. And uh, see, yeah, Ayushi's journey, like, uh, it is like... Uh, I mean, most of the aspirants will easily connect with her and also uh, the journey is not being like very smooth as such uh, because uh, one thing that you will always, uh, I mean, you would be looking up to her is because she has cleared all the three items in, I mean, prelims basically. So she has cleared uh, prelims in all the three items. She has given mains in all the three items and uh, she misses the first attempt by 13 marks and then later uh, she gets the All India Rank 334 and she's uh, already in service. And finally, she gets uh, rank 36. So, uh, so we would be uh, discussing majorly on the journey and uh, the uh, learnings from each attempt and what worked and what did not work out for her. And also the other thing is she has got a very good uh, score in mains as well, around 845 is her score. And uh, essay where the overall average score this year has gone down a bit, uh, down uh, and on average from the topper side. Uh, and Aishi Pradhani's ka score is really great year uh, with a score of 130. So we'll be discussing all about this and uh, welcome back and welcome once again Ayushi and uh, I would like you to introduce uh, yourself now. Well, you have told almost all the things. Uh, besides this, I'm an uh, engineer. <laughs> like most of the aspirants, they're mostly engineers and I belong to uh, Bhubaneswar. I'm from a uh, small town in, from Odisha only. And Ayushi, what uh, inspired you or what is that one thing that made you think, okay, that I, I'm not for, a, for probably an IT sector uh, role. I want to take up civil services. What inspired you? Uh, so uh, somehow I always felt that I should be doing something which will uh, bring large scale impact in the society and mm -hmm. some type of grassroots development. So I had that in back of my mind. And then a few incidents happened. There was COVID and my father was uh, actually infected, like 90 percentage uh, lungs uh, was completely damaged. And that time I saw my family, how helpless they were. And uh, luckily in our flat, we had a deputy commissioner B of BMC. He mm -hmm. actually, uh, he's also a civil servant who uh, from Odisha state civil servant. And he actually helped us. So there I saw that how civil, uh, how a civil servant can uh, use his power to change the life of people because that day if he could not if he did not help us uh, our father it might happen that we would have lo lost him and our entire family and everything would have changed so that one person can actually change the life of so many people so that I realized I saw that in front of my eyes and then finally I decided to uh, quit and from there my journey began okay okay that's an emotional journey in fact and uh, I think uh, with this experience, definitely you would be a great asset uh, to the people of your district and make a lot of positive changes. And most importantly, be accessible, more accessible to the uh, yes. public. That is what is actually, I think, uh, made a difference here for you as well. Yes. And uh, coming to your journey, as I've already said before, uh, it's like uh, very, you're close to it, but you're not getting what you wanted. So all the three items went in the same direction. Yes. So, right, uh, so missing out by 13 marks in the one mm -hmm. attempt, then getting a rank 33 34. But still, you wanted to get into that uh dream job of yours, and that uh, okay, so uh, finally, you got 36. So, obviously, how was this journey like? Uh, did you ever feel that okay, I should just stop? Uh, did you ever feel so? Uh, and if that was the thing, then what kept you motivated throughout this journey? Uh, yes, sir, I always felt that I should be quitting and uh. It's actually the most depressing phase is going till the interview and then not seeing your name because you are almost clo uh, very close right. to your destination and just one step you are away. And then uh, I have seen two times my dream being shattered uh, by being extremely close. So I think that's the most uh, difficult and shattering point of my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, though I had thought many a times that I should give up, but I think my initial motivation was actually strong enough to uh, to to uh, to push me further. And luckily, I had the support of my parents and my family who always uh, they inspired me, they motivated me. And there was one more thing that uh, in the first two attempts, I knew that it was not my 100% because in my first attempt, I did not, I have not completed my syllabus also uh, for mains and uh, for optional also, it was, I was very weak in optional, my fundamentals were not clear. 
in second time though i completed my syllabus but there was lack of revision so i always knew in the back of my heart that uh, my 100% has not been uh, has not been given yet so that i always knew so in my third i had almost uh, re revised everything i had pres i worked on my presentation so i almost did whatever i could find which was missing so i knew that my 100% has been given in this attempt so this attempt i think if it would not have happened i would have been shattered the most so luckily god uh, yeah. no that's what i always believe in this uh, saying which says uh, fortune favors the brave yes. and uh, this what has happened so uh, coming to this attempt from especially from rank 334 to rank 36 what was the difference that uh, you think you have made in your preparation also uh, uh, last time i did not get time for my revision especially optional this time i worked on my optional uh, and uh, i i had prepared uh, notes on the pyqs properly of optional then in gs i did not have worked on my presentation skills which i worked this time more i had practiced more actually i i used to write answers every day uh, in the morning and then i used to compare it with uh, my peer uh, answers there was a, and then uh, uh this time i worked on essay last attempt i had ignored the essay paper but this was the only attempt where i focused a bit more on the essay part and i think essay also played a uh, pivotal role this time so mm -hmm. this were the changes and uh, mostly i worked more on revision and tests okay, revision and tests yes. uh, were the key things and also like when i asked you about your journey you mentioned the role of your parents and family and um, most of the uh, students who have cleared right or i would say all of the students always mention that their parents and their uh, friends play, play a very important role yes sir uh, so uh, can you emphasize more on that yes sir like uh, i think my parents they did everything because i have never prepared from uh, delhi i was always situated in home i started my preparation online the very basics started, the entire journey is in home so from the very morning till the night i got the support of my parent uh, be it the financial support of my father like whatever materials i needed whatever coaching i needed he was always there then uh, my mother uh, she used to take care of my diet because uh, i did not eat oily food because that actually uh, makes you sleepy and everything so she uh, takes perfect care of my diet and my every uh, things then uh, then when i talk about coaching and other things so when i when i when i'm giving lot of test so we have to take the uh, test print out and also that my father did and then you have to scan the copy so that also lets <laughs> into time waste so my fa I, i wrote the answers and that scanning part and everything that was done by my father or my brother so uh, and also in home they ensure that i do not get any disturbance so they would not play a uh, tv loudly or they would not even talk loudly and uh, uh, the the my uh, my relatives also they did not visit because i would be disturbed so uh, i think the entire family they gets involved into the upsc preparation yeah. and uh, i have few close friends also so uh, they they provided me the emotional support when i feel low and down so they were always there ki we we know that if you give you will get your result and all those things so yeah. therefore the entire role of family and friends it becomes important yeah what uh, many don't understand is uh, the sacrifices that the families also make along with the students yes. right and uh, that is a very important role that strong emotional support because we are always into reading and reading and uh, we sometimes we get to uh, get get disconnected from the uh, close uh, what do you say circle and uh, but that is not the right way i would say yes, uh, so const consistent support from the family and friends are equally and very important in one's journey yes, right so that psychological uh, impact is also very uh, i mean very important in this part yeah so now uh, coming to the prelims part uh, and i think uh, you would be the best person to answer that because uh, it's not uh, once because i've seen uh, students we have cleared right uh, the upsc and the next attempt they miss out uh, prelims so all this has happened but for you the consistent thing is you are able to clear prelims all the three attempts and especially with prelims around the corner uh, next one and a half months and the cut off is also come down very low this time and uh, yes it as it is predicted csat is the reason for it so what was your strategy for prelims if you can give, put it give it us in detail it will help a lot of students who will be listening to you today so sir so, uh, i feel that the reason why i cleared consistently so first attempt only i had prepared second third it was like result will come and next four days prelims so i have not prepared for the 2023 
so okay. what actually <laughs> held i think was my conceptual clarity in, in subjects like polity and economy uh, and science and tech because uh, this subjects they are actually static i think the most focus is on static but students they waste lot of time reading current affairs but i had focused more on static i i had a lot of conceptual clarity in political economy and most of my questions from this sections was was uh, 90% accuracy so they were always right so uh, lakshmika and spectrum this basic books i had done them very properly and i had uh, analyzed the pyqs properly uh, the options of the pyqs and i had tried to understand like how the upsc examiner uh, how he sets the question what is in his mind and how will i use my logic to uh, eliminate the options i i do not arrive at the first uh, answer but i focus on eliminating the options and then arriving at the right answer so i had uh, focused on that and in my first attempt i had done lot of practice uh, of prelims i had joined multiple test series and i had taken help of multiple free program i was also uh, taken part of uh, rapid 60 days that also i had uh, followed yes so that also i had followed so uh, like that multiple uh, initiatives and uh, test series i had given so uh, i had practiced lot of uh, things and uh, my focus was not more on current affairs but on static part because uh, i had seen that upsc is linking both static and current uh so that was my uh, entire strategy uh, practice more and uh, focusing on my strength point i had not wasted lot of time on uh, ancient medieval and art and culture i had done selective reading for that i had just prepared uh, ncert uh, standard 11 12th tamil nadu book that only i had uh, read i think this last attempt only uh, i had uh, tried reading that but i don't think that helped much okay and uh, yeah as you rightly said uh, focus on the core subjects Yes. and that is what we kept telling students as well polity history economics geography especially modern history mm-hmm. and the geography these are your core subjects and this is what you should emphasize on and uh, practice makes a man perfect or even a woman perfect and uh, that is what you have done and i think that will be a key note for the students who are listening to you and uh, coming to the other part uh, with respect to elimination do you think elimination still works with the present trend especially the last uh, uh what do you say the uh, trend of upsc last exam uh upsc is uh, they have tried eliminating but i think uh, 50% question they have eliminated in 50 percentage it is still there so there people can use and in just 50 percentage uh, like they have given only one only two so there no elimination technique is there there it's pure knowledge yeah okay and coming to csat uh, how uh, like how did you deal with csat as so for me actually it was never a challenge because uh, i had my background in computer science and engineering and also uh, during engineering i had actually prepared for cat mba means i was thinking that i should be appearing so i had done that practice beforehand so somehow the knowledge uh, which i had done there it actually helped me out so i've never actually studied for csat and luckily because i had prepared that in some time of my life that helped me so whatever knowledge i had gained in my life i had used everything for clearing this exam okay so what i can understand is like even uh, the uh, though you have cleared all the three times prelims the efforts that you put in your first one or two attempts have really helped you so yes. that base knowledge that conceptual clarity uh, i think that is going that is that plays a uh, i mean uh, in a very vital role in this yes. right the same thing has happened with csat as well the poor efforts yes. that you put uh, years back uh, so subconsciously it has sat and it has helped in sat in yes. your mind it has helped you right yes. so that that is very important because especially there are people uh, who i have seen like we have not cleared prelims three attempts four attempts continuously and fifth attempt they get rank in all india top 20 30 uh, so that base knowledge so oh, what i would like to say is never lose that hope keep giving the attempt that consistent effort and consistency will definitely it's going to help right yeah so now uh, coming to the main part uh, what was your strategy because you have scored also 845 is a very good score in mains and uh, especially with respect to essay 130 uh, marks you have got so what was your strategy in uh, mains and especially in specific to essay uh in mains i had prepared a uh... in mains the syllabus is very clear so i had uh, short notes on uh, the keywords in notes i did not write the basic things i just wrote the value addition part the case studies or supreme court judgment uh, ex- unique examples committee recommendations so that i had synchronized for paper wise yes value addition. so that i had for the gs and uh, again uh, here also i focused more on pyqs i had comp- i had done mind map of all the pyqs uh, from the last 10 years uh, and uh, i had 
had the structure i had thought in my mind that if this question comes so i'm going to structure it this is what i'm going to add what diagrams i'm going to do what flowcharts and what etc so that mind map i had uh, done beforehand which actually helps to quickly think and also i had practiced lot of test series and as i mentioned i had done daily uh, answer writing also so that was for gs uh for essay uh, what i did specifically this time was uh, last uh, uh, i took the upsc pyqs uh, philosophical topics and uh, i tried finding anecdotes for them and i also did mind map the same thing only i applied for essay i tried to uh, uh, find out the structure like how should i be structuring my essay and i also took help of chat gpt this time <laughs> to i i wrote the essay after after i had uh, my thoughts i uh, i typed the topic in chat gpt and i gave a very a uh, unique uh, like uh, i am forgetting the name prompt engineers they do this task so you have to give actually accurate prompt to get better result yeah. so so i tried uh, predefining my prompt to make my answer unique and uh, i got unique anecdotes also i got unique uh, structuring style also from chat gpt so in that way i added that also <laughs> so yeah, somehow i used my... you have used the technology to the optimum extent yes sir <laughs> okay so okay nice and uh, it's all about how effectively and efficiently you are trying to utilize the resources around you yes. and uh, you have done it uh, very effectively and that is what has reflected in your final rank this year uh, and uh, uh, yeah uh, with respect to essay uh, uh, there is like philosophical essay and theme based essays mm -hmm. like normal theme based essays like women related environment related history related all that is one part yes, but uh, uh, if you look at the recent trend again it's going more of philosophical wise mm -hmm. so uh, what is this what was your strategy for philosophical essays and also like uh, uh, did you come up with any subheadings when you were writing an essay did you underline the subheadings or the other important points in the what how was your style uh for philosophical uh, my uh, my thing was that i will understand it then i will break it down the structuring i will do in my mind so uh, i will write three to four structuring and for each subheading i i made a box and for each subheading i had around four to five arguments and each arg first i will write my argument and then uh, i will try to substantiate my argument by giving uh, one or two examples and those examples will be not from the same field if one time i'm giving example from polity in my next argument i will give example from some other thing like Like environment or economy, so mm -hmm. I was integrating my GS and ethics knowledge, uh, and putting it into a beautiful flow. I think that is what is required. And uh, yeah. I made two to three subheadings, and all the important things were also underlined. I tried to underline it this time. Last year I was not doing it, so I felt underlining makes the examiner easy to read. And also I did the boxing. Uh, okay. It was uh, I think in one essay. Actually, it's not predefined. Uh, in few essays, I feel that I could write it better if I'm making subheadings. In few essays, I feel that writing subheading is not required here because it will break the flow. So it actually depends on the topic which I'm attempting. Yeah. So it is like uh, according to the demand of the topic. Yes, sir. Your structure, all yes. that. So did you introduce any uh, flow charts in your essays? You came up with some diagrams in your no, essays. No, sir. No, sir. No. <laughs> i feel that breaks the flow in its yeah, literature yeah. In fact, uh, yeah so i was having a conversation with the meedan and the all india rank 30 so she said the same so i never tried this because that breaks the flow yes. and this is an important message for every student who is listening to this part uh, especially where they keep coming to be like should be improvise in the diag with respect to diagrams flow charts and all i think the flow to the essay is more important yes sir right and also the story that you carry forward like yes, how to introduction like intro and conclusion that plays a very important mm -hmm. role in essay Yes. Right. Uh, so how like how did you work upon it, and how were you introducing the essays and con so, conclude? Ah, uh, so mostly I started it with anecdotes. Ah, uh, and also I had ah. Uh, i had some few novels which i had uh, read their summary short summary a uh, few novels could actually be used to start your essay i think this time also i started my essay with uh, actual uh, novel only uh, do you remember the essay that you wrote uh, this time i i wrote uh, one on uh, there was one essay regarding decision making which requires uh, uh, which requires both intuition and i think uh, uh, there was something related to decision making is an uh, intersection of two things logic and something so i i chose that topic and in second was related to uh, boys and girls uh, which is a very traditional thing which they have asked so How this two so which one the boys and girls 
the boys and girls i don't remember uh, but this first essay i started this with a novel uh, it was regarding a uh, mark shell that frankenstein monster the very fa- famous yeah, yeah. so i started with that because there he just used his logic he was not using the other thing like should he uh, develop that means uh, his emotions and ethics those things he were he was not using there and therefore it resulted into a disaster so with that i started that what happens if decision making is not done uh, ju- just done using logic and therefore the role of other things comes into play and i think in that way i started but i don't remember the exact thing but somehow i think i i i had taken a reference of that so i had uh, notes of uh, a few uh, novels and also few movies can be also used to uh, start your yeah. essay there are few uh, movies which are uh, very popular they can be used then uh, there there are uh, very uh, histo- historical uh, incidents which can be used so i had notes of that and i always started i tried starting uh, my answer with such unique anecdotes and stories uh, which are uh, Uh, which are actually uh, better to read sometimes also it can be started by presenting two unique uh, scenarios two different case studies which are different which are dynamically different so uh, i had prepared uh, a lot of uh, around 20 to 30 anecdotes and i always tried uh, using those and for conclusion uh, either i would try to end it uh, by connecting the dots like uh, ending with the same story which i had started or uh, sometimes i would uh, also talk about like how this topic is relevant in the current times and i try to link it to, uh, into some contemporary things so in that way i try to uh, end my essay no obviously you put in a lot of efforts in terms of all this background work so uh, especially when you also mentioned about note notes and many students have this issues of note making like how many pages should it be there when should i start making notes is it in my first reading second reading or in the last third reading or should it be online or offline so many confusions are there so if you can uh, uh, give a insight into the notes making it would definitely help a lot of students so i think there are multiple ways and it depends like uh, on what works best for you for me i started first with i used one note it's an application of microsoft it actually helps you to better synchronize the things so uh, bulkier notes i made using that and for my last minute revision i had short notes which i did in hard copy mm-hmm. but uh, because in one note i can completely synchronize topic wise so that i had uh, and my i did not actually make lot, lot of notes so uh, i am an early riser actually i woke up around 5 to 6 am and uh, then i started my day i started with meditation because uh, that helped me to uh, keep myself calm and stress free and also i i saw that my memory power also improves with uh, meditation i started listening to gayatri mantra on a regular basis so that also helped me to improve my concentration and memory power uh, after that uh, uh, i did not have any fixed time but i had fixed target that uh, this day i have to complete this topic anyhow and i also had uh, i had a i had a rough timeline uh, of one year that this subject i'm going to complete before uh, this month like that i had a rough timeline and uh, i also had a, a rough uh, when i woke up in the morning the first thing i did is i planned my day that these are the things which i am going to do uh, and i try to roughly uh, write a schedule that this to this then 30 minutes break and 2 hours i will eat then take then this i will do i will do lunch then i uh, i used to take power naps in between to refresh my mind so i i always used to plan my day uh, uh, first that is my first thing to plan my day properly and then i uh, and and also the plan should not be so very much ambitious because uh, if if it is very much ambitious then you will fail and that will actually uh, lead into uh, you will get disheartened so a uh, plan should be something which can be executed by you and that should be uh, done by you only because it's only you who know your strength and your weakness i might be very strong in few subjects like for me i was not that much good in history Uh, but mm-hmm. i was very strong in th- uh, subjects like economy and science and tech so i knew my strength and uh, in that way i planned my uh, entire schedule and uh, i tried to uh, follow t- uh, to that schedule as possible many a times i could not complete my target uh, but if i if i'm not completing my target i actually kept in between a spare day uh, where i where i could complete whatever is pending and also uh, after i completed a subject i did focus on uh, adequate revision because in upsc uh, it's not about uh, retain, uh, re- knowing more but it's about knowing less and uh, uh, presenting it effectively and uh, to uh, to the point so i focused more on revision uh, in this attempt third attempt okay, okay. so uh, coming to current affairs 
current affairs uh, again it's like an ocean you keep swimming you keep swimming and you will not find your destination at all so that is how wide uh, the current affairs content is students are confused with multiple sources in the market mm -hmm. right and uh, they are not able to revise things yeah. and also which paper to read whether you should you read hindu or indian express or live mint or pib or whichever source it is or uh, like how do how do i make notes from current affairs so there are a lo lot of questions running around in their mind especially when it comes to current affairs or should i be sticking on to a monthly magazine of any institution mm -hmm. so uh, what would you have to say for this so when i started i started my uh, daily newspaper but i was not able to understand newspaper because uh, at, when 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 you are new you don't know concepts of political economy so it looks very huge that you have so many things to read so i stopped reading newspaper altogether <laughs> and i think that was the best thing i did because <laughs> initially you have to compute your static part without computing static you cannot understand the current affairs so i i did not read newspaper and i just read uh, the monthly magazines of uh, coaching a uh, newspaper i had read more uh, during my interview time and even between pre to mains also i read newspaper but at a different way when when i am reading a newspaper my focus was just that i my purpose was very clear like why i am reading it my focus was i am reading it so that i can add unique examples to my answer so i will just take 10 to 15 minutes and whatever unique things i find from the newspaper beat case study beat data or a good point from the editorials that i will go and add to my note gs2 or gsc i will try to link it so that was my purpose uh, which i read and also what i did was uh, for mains specifically uh, for for topics i would search that in google i would uh, i would type the in news section i will see the recent news which is related to that topic so that that is also a good way to uh, get yourself updated uh, in mains uh, so that was my newspaper strategy in current affairs and for prelims uh, my focus was a uh, few subjects like environment and science and tech they they are very much dynamic so there i had referred multiple sources for uh, only for this subject uh, environment and science and tech okay and uh, since you mentioned that especially with respect to the gray areas or the gray subject that we say where in the sources are not predefined uh, and also it becomes very difficult to understand the topics that would be coming uh, that is nothing but your medieval history ancient history uh, then science and tech and environment so how do you tackle this gray areas So for uh, medieval yeah. ancient, so uh, for ancient and medieval, I felt that uh, the output ratio is quite low. So uh, I had uh, I had read Tamil Nadu NCERT, and uh, I did not have time. But uh, in my third attempt, I actually referred to notes in this third attempt. Uh, that was my strategy for ancient and medieval. Uh, for uh, environment, I would say that uh, it's it's also it's not completely dynamic. It's it has a lot of static part also. So I had. prepared uh, i had read pmf is uh, that was environment i had done the pyqs properly especially the species and all so i had uh, made notes of that uh, uh, like whatever species they are asking from the last 10 to 15 years whatever options that i had done properly uh, so in that way i had pro uh, properly done uh, environment and for science and tech also again it's not completely current affairs uh, i was lucky that uh, I, in in our uh, foundation i came across ravi sir uh, and then uh, by uh, since my static was always strong therefore i did not have to give much attention on the current affairs because so what i felt is current affairs actually repetition of the static things which we already know uh, hardly because now if i look into newspaper hardly i will take 10 minutes because it's all, uh, it's everything we know already so if if you are static i will say that give uh, your best to your static do master your video static then you will feel that everything is just a repetition just few or two events they happen but the concepts remain the same mm -hmm. yeah yeah i would agree to that as well and uh, now coming to your optional uh, optional uh, your optional is anthro and you have scored uh, decent score also this time 290 uh, right 290 290 plus so uh, especially for freshers who are choosing their optional uh, what would you advise them should you should the student look at the trend of the subjects because which subject is doing well in the last 3 4 years or should it be based on their interest or materials available what should how, how should one choose their optional so i think it should be intersection because uh, sometimes if you choose your interest it's okay but uh, some subjects are really not doing good like uh, i few years pubbed was completely down yeah. though no matter how many how much students were trying but they were not able to get marks so uh, i think we should look at the intersection your interest and the performance of the optional along with the guidance and material because everything is important and if you if one area is down 
no matter other area my, you, my it might happen that you have lot of interest but if you don't have proper guidance and material you will not perform well so our uh, our effort should be to optimize the performance and to clear this exam uh, in the minimum time possible so i think that uh, we have to also look into the performance of the optional we have to be uh, a bit calculative when we are choosing any optional subject or whatever we are reading we have to be very much output oriented and calculative in that because we have less time and we cannot uh, uh, waste our uh, years and efforts and hard work Sure. Okay. I had followed that in my first attempt, uh, and also uh, the TLP, the uh, main sensor thing. Writing. Yes, the main sensor writing. Uh, that also I used to. Uh, I I used to refer uh, when I was beginning my preparation. I used to refer that to understand like how questions can be asked from a particular topic. Uh, it has been actually uh, given uh, very like topic wise. It has been divided GS one, GS two, and then topic wise. So it actually helps to understand like what all questions can be asked from a particular area. And once you know the questions which has been asked, you know like how to focus and how to read. So it actually helps you to streamline your mains preparation. so uh, that also helped me uh, and in uh, interview time i had a uh, discussion with uh, with mohan sir which was uh, really insightful just uh, it was one to two days this time i could not get time to prepare for my interview this was just uh, i just given around one mock and i think just one to two interaction i had that was all which i did for <laughs> this interview this year so so i wish uh, since you are our ilp student so how effectively uh, like how to effectively use ilp program yes uh, i think first uh, the most important problem which students face is a uh, lack of consistency so ilp solves the problem by giving a proper timetable and uh, there is proper uh, daily targeting along with test uh, so that actually solves uh, your uh, way of scheduling and those things so in that way uh, for someone who is beginning the preparation it can be useful for them uh secondly uh, the uh, the major issue which students face is regarding current affairs so ilp solves that problem by providing uh, uh, proper mains pedia and uh, there which where answers are written in ibc format uh, the the news are given and it is being properly synchronized uh, into gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 and there are also subheadings under it so uh, it it actually helps you to uh, uh, to master the current affairs just at one place uh, there is no need to refer to multiple sources because all the newspapers the major newspapers are being integrated into one single place and also regarding value added notes uh, which i had personally benefited from ethics i had referred to ethics vn so uh, that can also be uh, 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 be referred because uh, it's it's not just like normal book but lot of examples and case studies and uh, unique uh, uh, unique uh, points are being mentioned there so it actually solves the problem of uh, of uh, your consistency and uh, multiple sources uh, and also at an affordable price thank you thank you for that Uh, so just yeah, explain them how to effectively use utilize it, and uh, so uh, so Ayushi, uh, uh, you are also a TLP student who had uh, referred it on a regular basis. So how to effectively utilize TLP program? Uh, TLP uh, between pre to mains, I think uh, between that I had used it, and uh, the, there was uh, a schedule. Uh, of tlp also so what i did was i had a small peer group and we started writing answers uh, two to three answers from tlp and we used to read uh, each other's answers so that actually helped me to uh, improve my presentation and uh, uh, by looking at others answer i got to know like what all i can write what all unique points i can add so in that way it helped uh, though i tried following the schedule but actually it gets difficult for me to stick to someone's else schedule my problem is that i have to do things in my way because i know my weak point and uh, so i had a bit issue with that but though uh, that was my problem but still it actually helped helped me uh, uh, to write and practice the answers okay yeah and uh, in fact uh, taking a clue out of it also we are uh, introducing uh, offline also that daily answer writing which we have online yes. we are also introducing it on a offline mode uh, this time so that uh, student because there were many uh, uh, students who had actually asked for the offline mode like mm -hmm. daily so we are trying to integrate that with the uh, weekly test series that we have tlp again okay so that is the mode in which we will be going forward actually uh, now uh, come to the last part of our discussion uh do you have anything uh, as a i mean do you have anything to say to students who are preparing for this exam uh, your piece of advice to them uh, because you have seen the i mean as you are a person who has missed it very close range mein yes sir so so what do you have to say for the students who are listening to you sir i think that uh, 
do we give our best in this exam but uh, somehow sir i believe a divine blessing is required to clear this exam uh, i do i'm getting 36 rank but there might be people who know more than me who have done lot of hard work even more than me and maybe they deserve it more than me but maybe there was a divine blessing which i had so i am here so i believe that uh, though we have to give our best but still amount of divine blessing is always required so that i would say that you give your best and if at all you are not clearing it's it's still okay it does not mean that you you are any less than other it just me- means that you you might have something else which is uh, written in your destiny maybe something which is even better than i is uh, so uh, just trust the process enjoy the process and if you are not clearing it's okay uh, i will say that don't waste many years give 3 to 4 years and that year should be your you should give your 100% everything you should give whatever you had and even after giving your 100% if you are not able to do it's okay it's okay there are lot of other opportunities which are even better than this so uh, instead of falling into this uh, cycle and trap i think they should also explore other options that's uh, my advice yeah the line that you said that uh, there might be people who are more deserving than you right that shows how humble you are uh, and i wish that i mean the same humility is kept even going further because that will do a lot of good for many people who will be looking up to you and uh, the common thing that i've been hearing from uh, everyone is uh, life is much much bigger than upsc so you don't have to worry so much and put all your life we don't equate your life to upsc and and the focus should be on the process and not the end results so you put it rightly across and uh, it was uh, it was a wonderful conversation with you thank you sir. Uh, and uh, you have given a lot of inputs to uh, the students and aspirants who are looking up to you uh, with respect to your their preparation and uh, from the entire team of is baba we wish you all the best and you, good luck thank you sir yeah thank you.